Hello, I'm Luigi DiMeglio and welcome to another episode of Fuse. Student athletes at Fairfield have the 12th highest graduation success rate in the country, the National Collegiate Athletic Association recently announced. The graduation success rate of student athletes is calculated by measuring graduation over six years from initial enrollment. Fairfield has a GSR of 94% for the school's 17 varsity programs, and 15 of those boast a GSR of 100%. In comparison, the overall student population at Fairfield has a GSR of 81%. Director of Admission Karen Pellegrino believes that comparing the GSRs of student athletes and non-athletes is like comparing apples to oranges because of the multitude of factors that contribute to a student's success. Fairfield also has the highest GSR of, many, of any school in the MAC conference, which Pellegrino believes can be attributed to Fairfield's talented applicant pool of prospective students. Fairfield basketball kicked off their season last weekend in the Connecticut Six tournament, defeating our crosstown rivals for the eighth consecutive time. The Stags beat the Sacred Heart Pioneers 67-54, an accomplishment that was even sweeter following the online videos that were exchanged between the schools. Sacred Heart released a video showing a pioneer invading Fairfield's campus to encourage fans to go to the game, and Fairfield quickly followed up with a similar clip. Fairfield's video ended with students realizing that they didn't need to make the video because Fairfield has never lost to the Pioneers. Lead scorers were senior Maurice Barrow and sophomore Marcus Gilbert, though the freshmen also came out strong in their inaugural season. K.J. Rose got his first start of the season and finished with the nine points and five rebounds to help the Stags take home the victory. In an effort to battle the drinking culture on campus, the Southside Cafe has opened at 42 Bellarmine Road. With more on the story, here's Casey. Thanks, Luigi. We're here with Eric Lynch, the lead program strategist of the Southside Cafe. We're going to talk a little bit about how 42 Bellarmine gets a makeover on Saturday nights. Thanks so much for talking with us, Eric. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, so let's just talk about what is the Southside Cafe? It's an alternative programming space for students on Saturday nights. It's a little different from most of our alternative programming activities because students most of the time like go to an event to participate in it, right? Uh, you go to bingo to kind of you know, you win to, you like play to win prizes, or you go to a magician, you like see the act. But Southside Cafe is a little different in that you can literally show up here, sit down in one of our chairs, and just hang out for the entire night with activities going on around you that you don't necessarily have to participate in, but you can if you want to. Awesome. So this space looks a little bit like a study lounge right now. Mm -hmm. How is that transformed on Saturday nights? Sure. So we actually put student artwork all up around the walls behind us here. Um, we take some of the chairs out, we take some of the tables out, because it kind of looks like library furniture a little bit. And we actually fill this space with uh, Yogibo bags, which is like a new kind of uh, beanbag chair that's kind of being offered in the Northeast, a couple of their outlets. Uh, we talked to them, we sponsored, they sponsored us a little bit, gave us a great discount on their uh, product, and we've been filling the space with it. We also have uh, a bunch of like coffee tables and funky lamps we picked up from Goodwill and a bunch of places like that to really kind of transform the space. Awesome. So you've been doing this for about two weeks now? Yeah, we've been open on October 19th, November 9th, and tonight, November 16th, we'll be open again. Uh, we've had a couple of different activities. We had s'mores and fire pits. We had uh, kind of free food being offered, a live band, a couple of different things, and students have really liked it so far. And the turnout has been great? Yeah, we had 140 the first night, which exceeded our expectations, and then we had about 170 on the second night, so we're really doing well. Is there some upcoming events that students should be looking for? Yeah, uh, on November 23rd, so next weekend, we're going to be offering uh, a live band will be here again as well. And then on December 7th, we're going to have like a holiday night. We'll have some holiday tunes playing on uh, kind of the radio. And we'll have uh, stuff a stag. So it's like build a bear with a stag. It should be fun. Awesome. And so if students are across campus and they want to come down to Southside, how can they get here? What's the, mm -hmm. is there an option? Yeah, I mean, a lot of students like to walk. We've been lucky enough to have some great weather, so people like to come down and walk. But we do offer a shuttle service, so that's offered on all of our social media outlets if you follow Fairfield at night. Uh, if you check out the Campus Weekly or the Weekend or the numbers posted there as well. Uh, so you call our toll-free number. One of my uh, staff members picks up the phone. They'll come and pick you up wherever you are on campus and drive you over to the cafe. We offer students uh, the shuttle service as well uh, back to their residence hall once their night is over here. Awesome. Sounds great. Well, we wish you the best of luck in the Thank future. You. Back to the studio. Thanks, Casey. 
The 50th anniversary of President John F. Kennedy's assassination is November 22nd, and this important date in American history is being remembered across the country. The Lincoln convertible that JFK was riding in when he was shot remains one of the most popular displays at the Dearborn History Center in Michigan, and the museum will offer free admission and panel discussions to honor the memory of the late president. The Obamas and the Clintons will commemorate the occasion by visiting Kennedy's grave in Arlington National Cemetery on Wednesday. Obama will also present the Presidential Medal of Freedom, an honor Kennedy first established 50 years ago. President Lincoln will be one of this year's recipients along with Oprah Winfrey, astronaut Sally Ride, and singer Loretta Lynn. On Friday, the 50th anniversary of Kennedy's death, Obama will meet with representatives from the Peace Corps, which Kennedy established in 1961. And now, here's Casey with entertainment. Thanks, Luigi. In this week's entertainment news, 30 Rock star Alec Baldwin had his late night talk show suspended for two weeks by MSNBC after a report that he had used an anti-gay slur when talking to a paparazzo. Baldwin denies using homophobic language, but is unsure that his show will ever be back on the air. Baldwin also expresses concern for the well-being of his wife and newborn child as they cope with being targeted by the paparazzi as well. Kim Kardashian Instagrammed two photos of her new baby girl, North, this past week. Kim and Kanye have been extremely private with North up until this point. Biggest Loser trainer Jillian Michaels is under fire after she had been discovered that she had given her team caffeine pills without permission from a doctor. Her team was penalized in this past week's weigh-in, and former American Idol contestant Ruben Studdard was allowed back into the competition. That's all for this week in entertainment. Back to you, Luigi. For Fuse, I'm Luigi DiMeglio. See you next week.